Hi everyone, I'm Eun Sun Cho, a customer engineer at Google Cloud. Welcome back to the technical series for startups, where we are creating a series of videos for technical enablement to help startups to start, build, and grow their businesses successfully and sustainably on Google Cloud. In the previous episode, we share with you how to manage APIs with FPG. Today, we are moving on to our 11th stop, which is on security deep dive. In this video, we are going to cover introduction to the security command center, top use cases of security command center that you can use in your security operations lifecycle based on your organization's needs, and demo. Lastly, active assist security capabilities. Well, come on, let's head right on and explore together. How can we detect malicious activities in the Google Cloud environment? The Google Cloud solutions that we will be focused on during this session are Security Command Center, also known as SCC and Active Assist. SCC is inspired by the same technologies that Google uses to protect itself. We are now bringing this cloud native technology to the market so that you can utilize it to protect your organization. As you move from your private installations to public cloud, typically what we hear are four major concerns. The first is really the change in visibility and control you see from what you have when you are in on-prem to when you are in the public cloud. Secondly, as you add and grow into a public cloud, rely on new systems, new controls, and new things to learn, and that inconsistency between what you are used to and what's running in public cloud also creates opportunities for misconfigurations. Thirdly, on an ongoing basis, you need to demonstrate that you are maintaining compliance or transparency to your management, your auditors, and even yourself. Lastly, the inability for you to detect and respond to the threats that you see in your systems at the same rate with the same kind of details that you have in the past. Because of these kind of main concerns, we really focus on creating the security command center to give you one central place across your organization. So how does security command center work? As you can see in this slide, SCC continuously monitors your Google Cloud environment to discover assets, identity misconfigurations, and web application vulnerabilities and detect threats in near real time. SCC also provides you these capabilities for you to effectively manage security and risks. There is an asset view that provides a real-time view of your resources and policies, changes to your inventory, and the security findings associated with each of those assets. You get security findings that span across misconfigurations, vulnerabilities, and threats to your GCP environment. It gives you a prioritized security findings view that helps you to address potential security issues. Another capability within SCC is a compliance view. Compliance view enables you to view and know where you stand by correlating all its track misconfigurations and vulnerabilities to industry standards like CIS, PCI DSS, NIST 853, and ISO 27001. It also provides compliance reporting segmented by these standards that you can use to track how your environment compares with the technical controls of these industry recommended benchmarks. SCC provides you recommendations and remediation steps for you to take action on the security findings and compliance violations. You can also send the findings to a SOAR or CM platform for you to remedy and respond. That was a brief overview of the SEC. Let's look into SEC use cases for further details. Here are the top use cases of Security Command Center that you can use in your security operations lifecycle based on your organization's needs. All these use cases will help you improve your security posture on Google Cloud. Let's walk through each of these use cases in Security Command Center. So as I said, Security Command Center is designed to give you a single organizational level view of the resources and assets you've deployed into GCP. You can see all the different resources that have been deployed 
broken down by asset type and you can identify the changes that have been made in those resources over time. To help you prevent threats, Cloud SEC shows you resources that have been misconfigured and provides recommendations on how to fix them before an attacker can exploit them. With Security Health Analytics, you can identify misconfigured virtual machines, containers, network, storage, and identity and access management policies. SEC also has Web Security Scanner. It can automatically scan to detect key vulnerabilities in App Engine, Compute Engine, and Google Kubernetes Engine applications before deploying them to production, including those from categories in the OWASP Top 10, such as cross-site scripting, use of clear text passwords, and outdated libraries. SCC also helps report on and maintain compliance. With the ability for security health analytics to perform continuous compliance monitoring, identifying resources that are known to be misconfigured against compliant controls from such as CIS benchmark, PCI DSS, ISO 20001, NIST 853, and more. These findings are surfaced through dashboard that can be filtered and scoped by projects or folders. This gives you control over how you assess your environment. These reports can be a starting point for remediation actions or exported out as a CSV that can be used to track your compliance status over the time. Lastly, with SEC, you detect threats targeting your Google Cloud assets. In cloud, the threat landscape looks a little bit different than it does on-prem. So in the cloud, there are some things you may recognize, such as malware, phishing, use of resources to commit outgoing DDoS. But some of these are more prevalent and more powerful in the cloud. With event threat detection, which we've built an externalized version of internal logs processing pipeline that Google uses to protect itself to protect you in the cloud. It watches cloud logging stream to detect threats like brute force, SSH, cloud IAM abuse, malware, and data exfiltration. Now, let's talk about one of our customers and how Security Command Center has allowed them to protect their cloud environment. CRASC develops and operates the CRASC educational platform. The platform is used by more than 3,000 junior and senior high schools across Japan. Security Command Center is integrated into Kurasi's ticket management system, chat system, and more by utilizing pops up and cloud functions. The moment Security Command Center detects a vulnerability or misconfiguration, it automatically integrates with Kurasi's ticket management system to register a ticket. Simultaneously, its chat system then notifies the administrator of the project affected by the alert. Mr. Ito, the data scientist and general manager, Data AI department of Kurasi told us that the entire company is more secure as a result of this initiative, not just the data AI department. And by making full use of the security command center mechanism, they are developing more robust services. Now let's take a quick tour to the console. In this demo, we'll explore how to get started with SEC. First, we should set up cloud IAM permissions to get started you need to ensure you have correct permissions in Cloud IAM. First, we should set up Cloud IAM permissions. To get started, you need to ensure you have correct permissions set up in Cloud IAM. To set up Security Command Center for the first time, you need the following identity and access management roles. Organization Admin, Security Center Admin, Security Admin, and service account creator. Once you complete the IAM settings, now we can enable services. Once you complete the IAM settings, now we can choose services. To do so, head to the console on the left-hand panel, navigate to security, and then click security command center. On the organization drop-down list, please select your organization. Then click on settings. And 
you can see all built-in services are enabled by default at the organization level. Each service scans all supported resources and reports findings for your entire organization. To disable any of the services, click Manage Settings. You can enable or disable a service for your entire organization or select folders and projects. Note, settings will inherit from parent resources unless overridden on child resource. Our built-in services are Security Health Analytics, which provides managed vulnerability assessment scanning that automatically detects the highest severity vulnerabilities and misconfigurations for your Google Cloud assets. Web Security Scanner, which identifies security vulnerabilities in your App Engine, Google Kubernetes Engine, and Compute Engine web application. Event Threat Detection, which uses log data from inside your systems and monitors your organization's cloud logging stream to detect threats. Container Threat Detection continuously monitors the state of container-optimized OS node images. The service evaluates all changes and remote access attempts to detect runtime attacks in near real time. VM Threat Detection is a managed service that scans enabled compute engine projects and VM instances to detect unwanted applications running inside VMs. You can also integrate with other services to have their findings surfaced in the Security Command Center. For example, Cloud Anomaly Detection, Cloud Armor, Cloud DLP, and for steady security from Google Cloud Security Service offerings. Now, the Security Command Center is ready to help you prevent, detect, and respond to threats. Last step, let's view dashboards. Time to see the dashboards. The Security Command Center dashboard displays a comprehensive overview of potential security risk findings. When you go to the Security Command Center, the Overview tab is displayed. The Overview tab provides you with a summary of the most severely rated findings in your organization, so you can prioritize fixes. New Threats over time shows the count of new threats detected per day. It provides hourly total for findings. New threads over time shows the count of new threads detected per day. It provides hourly totals for findings. Active vulnerabilities over time by severity is a graphic display that shows changes to vulnerabilities. Additional tables display findings grouped by category, asset type, and project. The tables let you view the number of times each vulnerability was detected and your most impacted resources. On the Threats dashboard, you can review potentially harmful events in your organization's Google Cloud resources. These resources are summarized by severity, category, and resource or project. The Threats dashboard displays reserved for the time period you specify in the drop-down list. You can click these items to see more detail on the specific findings. The Vulnerabilities dashboard displays security health analytics findings and recommendations. You can filter finding by project, category, asset type, and or benchmarks. The recommendation column provides a summary of how to remediate the findings. The compliance dashboard helps you review your high-level violation status and export reports. This dashboard provides summaries for the number of detectors associated with each compliance standard, including CIS benchmark and PCI DSS that Security Health Analytics and Web Security Scanner monitor. It is not a replacement for a compliance audit, but can be used to help you maintain your continuous compliance and catch violations only. 
you can filter the compliance dashboard by project and view or export reports of specific findings by compliance regime. If you would like to export security command center data, including assets and findings, you can find the export button on the assets or findings tab on the dashboard. Now, let's talk about Active Assist security capabilities. Active Assist is not just one thing. It's a portfolio of tools and services that span across Google Cloud. Active Assist combines data, intelligence, and machine learning to provide you with an array of tools specifically tuned to your usage. These tools are designed to reduce the complexity of managing infrastructure in the cloud. The Active Assist portfolio includes the Recommendation Hub and an API, as well as a collection of recommenders. With Active Assist, you can proactively identify security gaps and maintain best practices. You are able to use identity and access management role recommendations to help make your organization more secure by reducing the number of permissions that were overgranted. For the networking layer, Firewall Insights can provide you access to insights, recommendations, and metrics about your firewall rules. For example, you can identify unused firewall rules that can potentially allow unwanted access and present a major security risk to your organization. Also, with the firewall optimization insights, you can get insights on things like unreachable and misconfigured rules that may be redundant. Using the connectivity test feature from the Network Intelligence Center, you can simulate the impact of configuration changes as you apply them. This gives you confidence in a couple of especially tricky scenarios where you aren't 100% sure if it is okay to remove a particular firewall rule, for example. Finally, to protect sensitive data and power users who present a higher security risk if their identities are compromised, the account security recommender prompts Google Cloud project owners to protect their account with their phone's built-in security key. So, as you can see, Active Assist can help you reduce attack surface and get you much closer to the zero trust environment. All in all, Google Cloud is able to support your security needs. And we hope that this has given you a good understanding and how you can secure your Google Cloud environment using Security Command Center and Active Assist. And if after this session, you cannot get enough of Security Command Center and Active Assist and are keen to learn more about these two, check out the suggestions here and links in the description box. In our next episode, you'll be learning about Cloud Tasks and Cloud Scheduler. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the bell icon to get notified each time a new video is posted. Thank you, stay tuned, and we'll see you very soon in the next video.